EU legislation guarantees a high protection of your passenger rights. However, these rights differ across the four transport modes – air, water, rail and road – are scattered in various pieces of legislation and are sometimes incomplete. As passengers, it can be confusing. We do not know what we are entitled to or how we can claim what we deserve. We don't always get the assistance we are legally entitled to, and carriers are often left unaccountable due to loopholes in legislation or inefficient enforcement. This lack of consistency is also an obstacle to seamless travel when using several modes of transport. The European Parliament report drawn by Georges Bach argues that an holistic approach is needed so as to integrate all passenger rights into a common legislative framework. In order to further explore the benefits of such a consolidated framework, the Committee on Transport and Tourism of the European Parliament requested the preparation of a Cost of Non-Europe report, looking at the costs of not having a framework at European level. This report estimates that the cost of the shortcomings for transport users within the EU is at least 355 million euros annually. The report looked at four main areas of passenger rights, transparency, quality of service, enforcement, and intermodality. The lack of clearly established rules regarding all transport modes leads to misinformation and confusion. For instance, EU legislation guarantees the right for us as passengers to reimbursement in case our boarding is denied, but the conditions are not clear and differ across the four modes of transport. Passengers often report having problems in obtaining the full refund. Transparency issues also concern pricing procedures. Some travel agencies exclude tax, fees and charges when others don't, which also leads to passenger misinformation. Bringing currently scattered rules and regulations into one place would make them easier to find and understand, ensuring passenger rights and travel prices are more transparent. As EU passengers, we are entitled to non-discrimination and assistance in case of disruption. Specifically, EU legislation provides that carriers must guarantee that transport, for instance train platforms, are accessible to persons with reduced mobility and provide assistance at no additional cost. However, there are many confusing rules and exemptions over different transport modes that make it difficult for persons with reduced mobility to travel and claim their rights. In fact, the EU requires carriers to assist all passengers in case of disruption by providing meals, refreshments, vouchers and accommodation. 17% of airlines do not. Again, by adding clarity to passenger rights, there will be a knock-on effect for quality of service. Persons with reduced mobility will be able to travel more easily, and carriers will benefit from an increased number of travellers. Given the opacity of carrier information on our passenger rights, and the length and complexity of complaint procedures, it is difficult for us to claim those rights. We also waste time looking for the correct procedures or filing complaints that are ultimately inadmissible as a result of misunderstanding those rights. The increased transparency by pursuing the holistic approach to passenger rights would make it easier for passengers to know what they can claim and how to do it, making the process faster and easier, and in turn reducing costs for you. Intermodal travel is when passengers use two or more different modes of transport for one journey, for instance train and aeroplane. It gives us more options, but it also presents problems for us as we waste substantial time separately booking our tickets for a train and a plane, and waiting for connections between the various modes of transport that aren't coordinated. Often it is simply impossible to make the combined booking you want. The fact that there is currently no specific set of rights that apply to intermodal travel complicates matters. Because different rules apply to air, rail, waterborne or bus passengers, it is difficult for us travellers to understand and claim our rights. Integrating ticketing, booking and journey planning would ensure easier and faster changes between different modes of transport and contribute to creating a genuine single market. In July this year, in the report by Mr Dieter Lebrecht Koch, Parliament again demanded a passenger rights framework for intermodal journeys to facilitate this. The answer to all these issues lies in a single European legal instrument, a common framework that would encompass and clearly outline rules and regulations on passenger rights across all modes of transport. This would consolidate our rights and offer us a more seamless travel experience in Europe while saving us time, stress and 355 million euros a year. This is something that the European Parliament is committed to pursuing.